Good afternoon, good evening, and good morning to some of you. And thank you for joining us for today's special International March of the Living Tour of the YA Fine Art Gallery in Jerusalem, Israel, featuring March of the Living alumni, Yehoshua and Jordan Stauber. I'm Rochelle Baltuck, Director of the Broward County, Florida March of the Living Region. Since its inception in 1988, the International March of the Living has brought over 275,000 students and adults, both Jewish and non-Jewish, from over 40 countries around the globe to Poland and Israel on Yom HaShoah, Holocaust Remembrance Day, and Yom HaTzmaut, Israel Independence Day. The work of the International March of the Living has had a tremendous impact on its participants and has served as a call to action for our thousands of alumni to do their part to fight for a future free of anti-Semitism, racism, hatred, and intolerance in all its forms. While we continue to navigate this new world which we all find ourselves in, the International March of the Living remains determined to continue to educate the world about the horrors of the past in order to ensure a better future. As a director of the March of the Living Region, I get to interview, teach, and travel with an extraordinary group of teenagers and adult participants. In 2015, Yehoshua Stauber and Jordan Katz were two such teenagers, neither really knowing that they were about to embark on a journey which would forever change their lives. Each had a desire to learn and were active participants in all our classes. Their interactions with our survivors helped shape their experience. The experience of the March of the Living can claim many things, but when two people meet and end up making a Jewish life together, we couldn't be more proud of having had a hand in making it happen. The March of the Living continues to teach about our past while strengthening Jewish identity. We will begin today's presentation by hearing from Yehoshua and Jordan about their story. They'll speak about their experience on the March of the Living and how it influenced their life and career choices until today. We are honored to then be given a private tour of their gallery featuring breathtaking photographs of the land of Israel and hear from Yehoshua on the inspiration behind some of the pieces. After their presentation, we will open it up for any questions. Please place yours in the Q&A box and Liz Sinreich, Director of Programming for the International March of the Living, will moderate the discussion. Without further ado, let me present Yehoshua and Jordan Stauber. <music> Hi, I'm Yoshua Arye. And I'm Jordan. Welcome to the YA Fine Art Gallery in Jerusalem. We are going to take you around on a tour around the gallery. But first, we want to share with you about our story, how we met on March of the Living, and how we got to where we are today. So thank you so much for being here. And to start off, we'll share with you how we ended up on the March of the Living trip in the first place. So I, growing up in Hollywood, Florida, and going to Jewish day schools my whole life. It seemed like a very natural thing to do. A lot of my peers uh, were planning on going to the March for Living and I had been thinking about it for, throughout the years of high school. It was something that my parents were so supportive of. So it just made sense that I would go on this trip. Little did I know that it would be such a life-changing uh, event in my life. And even more than that, I would meet my wife on the trip. So looking back, it was it's pretty amazing how uh, something that seemed just like I was doing what, other, what, I, what my friends were doing turned out to be something so impactful and, and, and really meaningful. Likewise, in high school, at the end of senior year, it was the normal thing to do among my grade to go on the March of the Living trip. 
I definitely grew up in a home with a lot of Jewish pride, but I don't think I necessarily equated that with what the March of the Living trip would ultimately give me. Um, so leading up to the trip, I'll share with you a little bit of an interesting story. I actually was very hesitant to go on the trip. I <laughs> was hearing the details of what it was like to be in Poland, and sometimes it could be very cold and rainy, and you know we weren't eating like gourmet meals, and I got a little bit of cold feet, and my parents were really there and like gave me the the push to go. They were very supportive of this trip, and uh, needless to say, it has really propelled me um, to a new new way of living. So I, I find it interesting to look back and see that progression of it turned out to be such a wonderful experience. So, so I think I'd like to share a takeaway of mine. I could say like my main takeaway from the trip, which, which is I, prior to the trip, I think I related to myself, specifically my, my relationship with, with Judaism as I, I consider my, myself Jewish, but it wasn't something that I, I really thought about so much in the sense of me being Jewish in relation to the, the entirety of the Jewish people. And I think going on the march and experiencing everything that, that we experienced, and then from Poland traveling to Israel, and then joining in with, with our people again in a whole new atmosphere, I really felt something different. I felt part of my people in a way that I'd never felt before in my life. And that's something that I take with me until today, is that I consider myself a small piece in the puzzle of this amazing story of our people. And I, ha I am very thankful to have that feeling now. I definitely share in those feelings. And uh, one takeaway that I reflect back on is after the big march from Auschwitz to Birkenau in Poland, they have a very big ceremony on the March of the Living trip. And in the ceremony, they sing Hatikva. And I remember feeling very powerful, emotional experience of singing together in this place of the Birkenau concentration camp and feeling the light of the land of Israel and the light of our nation coming together in such a beautiful way in that moment. And that is definitely something that has stuck with me very, very much until this day. So after the march, having met my amazing wife, we... That was also a good part of the trip. Yeah. We, <laughs> we, we had never, because we, we were, even though we lived in the same county, we grew up in different worlds. She went to private school. I went to Jewish day school. And our paths just never uh, intersected until both being from the same county, we went on the same March of Living trip. And after we met, I think it was, it was, we were inseparable. And we continued talking after the trip. We started dating throughout the summer. And eventually, though, it came time for us to part for a little bit, where I took a gap year and traveled to Israel for the year, to Yeshiva. And that year, like the march, was also a life-changing uh, experience for me in ways that I, I grew in so many ways in relation to the land of Israel, to myself and spirituality and, our, and the Torah. And I loved it so much that I actually ended up staying another, another year to study. And after that, I ended up going to, to back to America to Yeshiva University, all well. So when he went off to Yeshiva, I went off to the University of Pennsylvania. And as he was getting more inspired, here in Jerusalem. He was on the phone with me and sharing some of the ideas that he was learning. One of the ideas that he shared with me then that has really stuck with me until now is that you can't give over the feeling of the inspiration that you were experiencing. Rather, it's as if you're trying to explain the taste of chocolate cake to someone who has never actually tried chocolate cake before. It's sweet, it's uh, moist, I don't know. Like you can't really explain the taste of something if you've never tasted it before. So he encouraged me to say that this is something that you have to discover on your own. 
and feel that inspiration for yourself. So I got more involved in my Jewish community at college. I was very involved in the Chabad community and the Hillel community, and thank God I had a really abundant amount of resources there that helped me to learn more about my Jewish identity. And I started to really fall in love with keeping Shabbat and keeping kosher, and I became much more observant throughout my time in college. And by the time I graduated in 2018, we were married in June of 2018. And from there... From there, we were left with the question, what do we do afterwards? Now that we're married, <laughs> where are we going to go? Where are we going to move into? What's going to be our first home? And after thinking about it for a while and looking back at our experience, which really started on the March of Living and when we traveled to Israel for the first time together, it became clearer and clearer to us that we wanted to make what seemed, I guess, in the past a uh, really wild or unthought of idea, but what became so clear to us, which was we wanted to start our home in the land of Israel, in the place that we, we felt was the... The birthing place of our relationship. Yeah. Also. And, and that was the continuation of the story that we now feel part of. So in 2018, pretty much right after our wedding, we, we, we moved to Israel and began our life here. So along with the decision to move to Israel came the decision of what we were going to do once we got to Israel. And looking back now, I can see how there was such a clear progression from the March of the Living that in the March of the Living, we have a lot of emphasis on saying never again and experiencing the tremendous horrors of that time and emphasizing the fact that we then go to the land of Israel. And for me, that translates into the fact that never again doesn't only mean looking back and remembering and not forgetting. Rather, it means moving forward, using our light, using the tools that we have in our Jewish pride and the pride for the land of Israel and sharing that with the world and being a voice and being a a person that embodies this message. Um, so for us, that became a clear progression into what we are doing now, which is sharing the light and the beauty of the land of Israel itself. So when we moved, when we moved to Israel, the first thing that we started doing was we started traveling around all over the country, and I being uh, a photographer, it was, it was a dream to just go to the most beautiful places in, all, all across the land and start capturing them. And I, we slowly started to see that we were building a collection that was really, really powerful, that showed a light of the land that people might not have seen before. Maybe if they visited here, if they went to certain locations, but to, to capture it in that way, to show the whole world was something that I started really chasing. I started chasing that dream, um, going on what, what my wife was saying about spreading a light that went all the way back to our trip to Poland that taught us that you can't get stuck in the darkness and you got to find that light. And traveling around the country, being newlyweds and wanting to share that experience with the whole world, that led us to create Why Fine Art, which is the gallery we're sitting in now. After that year or so of, of traveling and capturing and building a collection, we decided to open a gallery in the heart of Jerusalem. And it's a place now that people from all over the world can just come in and see our work, see what we're doing. We get to speak to people about our message and share our story. And it's something that's the culmination of this long development that really leads back to our trip on the March of the Living that sparked this amazing journey that we're still on and still un it's still unfolding every day. Um, it's something that I'm really, really thankful 
we're really blessed to be here, to be doing something with so much purpose, and really, hopefully, we're, we're spreading a, a light that, that is very much needed around the world. I think one of the favorite, one of my favorite things that people come in and say or share about their experience of being in the gallery is when they're just shocked that every single piece in here is taken in the land of Israel. The diversity of this land is really, really incredible. You can go up to the north and find snowy mountaintops and drive an hour down south, hour and a half maybe, and you're in just rolling desert sand dunes. And then a half hour out west and you're at the beach. And then an hour back this way and you're in Jerusalem, which is just the heart of the world. Um, so for that, I, I think that that experience of seeing people really light up and be affected by what they're seeing and, and deep, more deeply connected to the land and inspired by its beauty is one of the most rewarding things about our gallery. Mm -hmm. And I think if I had to sum it up in, in, in one way, is that in the Bible, when God says to Abraham, uh, the powerful message of lech lecha, go for yourself to the land that I will show you. God, even God himself, doesn't use any explanations or reasoning or descriptions of the land. He says, go for yourself to the land and you will see for yourself. You have to see it for yourself. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking for, with every photograph that I'm taking is I'm trying to see the land, the land in a new light and I want to I want to help other people see it in that way too. And it's really fulfilling to see that coming to fruition, that every new, every new piece that I create, every new person that comes in our gallery, every new piece that someone has hanging in their home, it's, it's that the light of this amazing land being spread to every inch, every nook and cranny of the world. And it's something that I'm looking forward to continuing for Ever. Forever. <laughs> and keep with it. Okay, so that's a little bit about our story and our connection with March of the Living. If you have any questions later on, we're really excited to hear them, and we'd love to elaborate on any points that you're interested to hear more about. So before we take you on the virtual tour of our gallery, I want to share with you one more idea, which is that a lot of times when people come to visit Israel, we tend to think that the holy sites, such as the Western Wall or synagogues, are really the only places that contain this holiness and purity of the land of Israel. But what we're trying to show with our artwork is that that holiness and that spirituality and inspiration really exists within every single inch of this land. And when we're looking around at the diverse landscapes, beautiful landscapes of this land, to have that in mind that it's not only the old city of Jerusalem that contains this spirituality, but there's an ability to access that everywhere that we are in this beautiful land of ours. So here we go. This is the piece in the entranceway to our gallery, and it's titled Misty Morning. I photographed this in the forest next to Chadera, which is just north of Herzliya on the coast of Israel. And as you can see, there's the foggy uh, haze in the background, which kind of blurs your vision of the overall scene, but to me, really adds to the beauty of the image. And I think the message behind this piece is really that we go through life and sometimes our, our vision is blurred. We can't see what's coming from our actions. But looking back, we can see how beautiful it, the end result is. And the people who planted this forest over 100 years ago, out of necessity of survival, because of the, the diseases spreading in the swamps of the area, they could never imagine that someone like me, who moves to Israel and now gets to travel to the forest and, and just be in the forest and appreciate its beauty, they couldn't imagine what would come from their actions. And I think that says a lot about everything that's happened in this land, how, much, how, how the contributions of everyone that came before us has really contributed to our ability to enjoy the land. And I'm really grateful for that. And I think that this piece also tells me a lot about my own life. And looking back, I can see how so many things in my life, I, I never saw in the moment what would come of them. But 
but really the amazing thing is that even though we can't see necessarily into the distant future, there's a certain beauty to that and I think this image really sends that message. This piece is titled Hidden Light, and it's an olive tree on the outskirts of Jerusalem that I photographed on the eighth night of Hanukkah. In order to capture this shot, I used a long exposure of 30 seconds, because at the time it was already past sunset and so dark in the sky that you couldn't see any of these colors. But using a long exposure, I was able to bring out so much of the light that we couldn't necessarily see with our eyes if we were there, but still was hiding in the sky. And by doing that, I was able to bring out these amazing colors and really accentuate the beauty of the tree. Another thing that happens with the long exposure is anything moving gets blurred. So the clouds moving across the sky over that 30 second period all blur together and, sh and really give you that experience of the movement, where the, whereas the tree and the leaves stood perfectly still. And I think this piece really goes hand in hand with the theme of, of Hanukkah because the theme of Hanukkah is to find the light hiding in all the darkness and everything we see. And by photographing this in this manner with these techniques, I was able to really bring out the light that was hiding there. And every time I look at this, this piece, I think about all the light that's hiding in everything that we go through in life. Here we have the Stones of Eternity. And what it is is five pieces of the Western Wall. I photographed each stone separately in order to retain the highest quality detail within all the aspects of the stones. And on the wall here is five stones, but I actually have ca captured 20 stones. And for me, this really brings out the, the uniqueness of each stone in the western wall and allows us to connect to them in a way that maybe we, we, we didn't before.
Thank you so Hello. much. To Hi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us. And thank you so much for sharing your story with us so eloquently and for giving us a glimpse into this really precious jewel of a gallery that you have. I'm sure I'm speaking for everyone here when I say when, when we're given the opportunity to visit Israel again, we can't wait to come and visit it in person. And it's really always such an honor for us to hear from our alumni and to share some of their accomplishments and to really shed a light on, on everything that they're doing in the world. So thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, I want to open up some of the questions just by going back to your journey on the March of the Living. Um, could you share with us what a highlight of your trip was and if you could summarize the experience in a single moment, what it would be? So something that I automatically think back to as a memory that stands out is walking out of Auschwitz with people who I grew up with, friends who I went to mommy and me classes with at one and two years old. And we just experienced the horrors of Auschwitz and the powerful emotions that we were all experiencing. And we walk out of the camps with linked arms and there's this feeling of pride and joy that comes from that of feeling like this is where we were and now we are bringing the light with us and we're so thankful to be able to have this opportunity to walk out of the camps. That's a feeling that very much sticks with me and that's automatically what I think back to. For me, I, I think back to the march itself, walking with 15,000 or so of my peers, my age group mostly, but people from all over the world, all walks of life and doing that together with everyone. I think what was, that's what's so special for me with the march is I could go, anyone could go to Poland and do a trip and that would be really meaningful, but to do it with the march and to do it with thousands and thousands of other people, um, it, it just creates this atmosphere of amazing, energy and pride that I won't ever forget. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm sure you had the privilege of attending the trip um, with the accompaniment of survivors. Can you speak about what that was like? Yeah, um, I would definitely say that was a very, very central part of the experience to go to the place where one of our survivors points and goes, that was my house and this is what happened in this spot um, but more than anything what I feel when I think about the survivors is just their positive energy and their excitement to be with us on this journey to share with us their experience and most of all to really share their inspiring light that they carry with them even throughout everything that they'd been through um, so I would say that that was really the foundation that set the course for the trip that that's the, really the message that we carry with us is to have that light and joy and not only to get stuck in the in the sadness of it. If anything can. Yeah, uh, I think something I think about is that for us visiting those places, that was our first time ever there and maybe our last. For them, it's something that a place that they're returning to. And I don't know what that feeling could what is like, but I think when you, go with the accompaniment of someone who was there before, you feed off of, of their energy, of what they're feeling by returning to that place. And even though it was my first time there, with them, it connected me to the past and, and their past and everything they went through more than I could ever connect to it if I was just by myself. I agree. And we're so honored that we've been able to do that for so many years and um, hopefully we'll continue to do so in the future. Would you recommend that all Jews or even non-Jews attend um, a program like the March of a Living? And why or why not from your perspective? I think, I think that first of all, first and foremost, that all Jews, if they're up to it, can, should go. I, I definitely put that little asterisk of being up for it. I, I know that it's a really, really powerful experience that maybe some people don't want to put themselves, put themselves through. I think it's really important that that maybe they try to overcome that because it's such a meaningful, such an important trip. It's to go and see the what happened there firsthand. And also such a part of our identity, unfortunately. Yeah. But it does make up a lot of our Jewish yeah. blood. To, to, own, to, to, to not run away from it, to go and, and be there. Uh, I think for non-Jews, 
I think I'd like to start with better Holocaust and just overall human rights education for Jews and everyone who suffered through history because by learning about what people have gone through throughout history, maybe it'll allow us to change for the future and, and stop what's going on even nowadays with so many people suffering. Uh, I think going, I think going, going on Poland, a trip yeah. like the march to Poland and seeing firsthand is, is more potent than anything you can read in a book or study in a classroom. Uh, so I would, I would definitely think that it's a powerful experience that everyone should have. Thank you. <laughs> Let's move on to your art, because I know that's what a lot of people want to hear about. So how did you get into photography in the first place? Uh, so <clears throat> I think it kind of happened from, I grew up in a home with a lot of creativity in the atmosphere. My mom paints, painted, still paints. Uh, so her paintings were just all over the walls of our house. And my dad, even though he's a doctor, on his free time, sometimes he would come home and in the garage, he had an arc welder and would find old metal in the garbage and start welding them together and make sculptures that we also had in the front yard around the house. Uh, so creativity was definitely supported and not only that promoted. At a very early age, I don't really remember exactly when, uh, they got me a camera, one of those small little point and shoots. And from that point on, it kind of stuck with me everywhere I went. I became the family photographer on trips, but more than that, I started using it as a creative, a, my creative expression. Uh, so I started taking pictures of things. We had pets. I would take a picture of a frog and see how that came out. And then throughout my life, it just grew. So I was a really young age. I was middle school, even maybe younger. And then in middle school with my friends, we would do experimental photography together on our free time. In high school, I got really into filmmaking and video as well. Uh, so it kind of started when I was really young and I think it just became a part of me. It wasn't something that I did, it was, it was me. And so being able to continue that on now is, is really special. Well, we are all privileged to be able to be the recipients of that. Um, and so when you decide to photograph something, what's your process like? Do you go to a place knowing that that's where you want to go or is the inspiration hit you? Can you speak about that a little bit? Well, maybe you could give a little background because a lot of the planning goes from her. Yeah, so it differs a lot. Um, usually what we'll try to do is plan a specific trip to a part of Israel. So let's say we'll plan a north trip and we'll plan to be there for two or three nights and really get a feel for the area. Um, he specifically likes to shoot at sunrise and sunset because that's when the lighting is the best for photographing. Most of the time. <laughs> Most of the time. Um, so generally we'll scout out the location and figure out where we want to go for either of those times and also capturing some, some shots along the way. Um, so those trips are really, really powerful and amazing for us because we're really led to where we need to go. It's not that we know the area so well and we know exactly where we're going. We're really exploring and discovering new parts of the land every time we travel. So it's a really special part of this journey that we're on. Definitely. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of we, we do our part and then we kind of hope to receive from above the guidance to exactly. and the what's required to get that shot. Um, then we, we also live in Jerusalem. So sometimes there's more spontaneous, the small day trips around Jerusalem, things like that. Can you each share, I know people are eager to hear and they've been asking in the chat. Can you each share one of what your favorite photograph is and why? Um, I think for both of us, it's very hard to choose. It's kind of like, it's almost like asking a parent, like, who's your favorite child? Yeah. <laughs> I think what's so amazing about the photographs, which I mentioned a little bit in the video, is how diverse they are. And each of them brings something so special to the table. Um, I'll talk about one specific photo that I particularly love. Um, it's called Blossom. And I think maybe... You have the, you do have the, the image. Product. We're going to pull it up in okay. one moment. Um, it's this is rows it. of trees with mountains in the back. So this is on one of those trips that I was explaining where we were up in the north and traveling around for a few days. And uh, we came through this town that was full of these farms and just rows and rows of trees. 
and we noted that we wanted to come here at sunset because he saw that the sunset and with the mountains was going to be very beautiful and he actually climbed on top of our car for this shot <laughs> and you can imagine i was there with our then maybe less than one year old daughter trying to keep her entertained and running around the farm without touching the car so that it doesn't shake the tripod because he has to stand so still on top of the car and um, that the experience of taking this photograph was was a very memorable one and also in the writing we called it blossom because we see it as the coming to fruition of the prophecies of how Israel will blossom in the times to come. Um, so we very much feel very, very blessed to be able to see that actually coming to life and seeing these rows of fruit trees blossoming in our times is really, really powerful. So for me, this photo definitely speaks to me very deeply. You, you're sure. And for me, so <laughs> like a kid. Yeah, like I said, definitely don't have a favorite. A but you only like have one child, that. so it shouldn't be so. <laughs> right now we only have one. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be blessed with with not being able to choose a favorite child. Um, but having spoken about the the tree, the the photograph behind us of the olive tree, which I I cherish that one tremendously. Uh, there's another one of the that's on the screen, the the of the Sea of Galilee. And this is on the north side of the Sea of Galilee uh, in the location that a lot of Israelis uh, have been to. Americans, maybe not, so, it's not such a touristy spot. Um, one of my close friends led me to this spot. It's actually called the Hidden Spring because behind it is, uh, there's a spring that comes and flows into the Sea of Galilee. Uh, for me, what's so special about this piece is similar to the other piece that my wife spoke about is that we, we went there actually during the daytime and I saw the scene and I was like, this is beautiful, but the lighting isn't right and we need to come back in a few hours for sunset. So for me, that right there is such a big part of all of my photographs is it's not just about taking a picture because I was there and, 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 and maybe posting on Google or social media. It's about capturing a light that will really show the unique beauty of Israel. And to do that, you gotta go, you gotta go and see, but then say, okay, I have to wait and come back for the right, at the right time. Uh, and then when we came back, I was able to really scout out the area uh, and finally set my tripod down and, and start setting up the shot. Now, when I took this, I was actually in the water itself. So my tripod was getting wet, my feet were getting wet and I was feeling the water coming around me. Uh, and to capture it, I used a, a few second exposure. So everything has to be perfectly still so that the water can flow through the image and, and blur out. Uh, all that together created this really dramatic experience for me being there uh, that I definitely, when I look at the image itself, I go back and I experience that again and again. I think that's a common theme is when we look at all of our photographs, we feel the experience of, yeah. of being there, which is something that's unique that we realize that when people come in, they're looking from such a different perspective. So yeah. it's interesting to be able to yeah. share that. And, and what's so amazing about the photograph is even those Israelis have been there or people who have been there, they're like, I don't even recognize it Definitely. because I never saw, I never even took the time to look at, in, at it in that way. And for me, that's like, that's exactly what I want. <laughs> Definitely. I think we all see a different beauty of the land through these photographs than what we would normally see in person. Um, a lot of people are sort of asking about your journey of making Aliyah as a young couple, um, deciding to come move to Israel and then creating you know and, and forming this gallery which i'm sure was not an easy feat can you talk about that do you have family in israel sort of how did that process have, you know go about yeah um we don't have any family in israel not I'm yet not yet <laughs> <laughs> um they're all still in florida and my mom is in tennessee um it was a big decision i'm not going to say that that it was just like a click of a button and here we are in israel there was definitely a lot of thought and commitment that had to go into it. And I think for us, a big theme of the whole journey is that commitment and having our underlying why. And that why is very much linked to March of the Living, what Yoshua was saying in the video earlier, feeling a part of this bigger picture of being a part of the Jewish people and wanting to be a part of the story of our people and building our home, building our family here, raising our two-year-old daughter who's now 
beginning to speak a lot and speaking in both Hebrew and English and seeing her really picking up the culture um, to be a part of, of the story of the Jewish people coming back to the land of Israel. So for us, having that why and feeling very concrete in that um, has allowed us to face all of the challenges of the bureaucracy and learning a new language, learning a new culture, settling into this new life. Um, opening a business. Opening a business. Which it's been a, a very big thing. Everyone who moves to Israel gets to do. Yeah. So adds more complications, opening a business bank account, yeah. all those aspects. One more note, and then you should, and then you'll speak more about opening the business. <laughs> okay. Um, is our friends? Thank God, we are blessed with absolutely amazing friends. One of my friends is actually at home watching our daughter right now for us, because um, that's who I felt comfortable leaving her with today. Um, and th having that support around us, that we really feel like our friends become our family here which also speaks to the amazingness of the Jewish people that we really show up for each other because we do have a lot of friends who also don't have a lot of family here. Um, so that's a big part of it as well. Uh, when it yeah, when it comes to actually opening the business, we, I think we signed the, the lease on our gallery about like two weeks after our daughter was born. So that was, that was a pretty stressful period. You weren't uh, busy enough. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it wasn't just, the gallery wasn't, you know, all nice and ready to be a gallery. It was there was no AC, there was no paint, there was the walls were, were very uh they needed a lot of uh renovations <laughs> put in the office and the bathroom. So all that was like a few months of craziness. Uh where I'm I'm very both of us are very blessed to have very supportive parents and uh they really helped us out with everything. My father in particular uh was very, very involved in the gallery he was actually here when we signed the lease on the gallery so oh him and my mother a great debt of gratitude mm -hmm. to give us the ability to do what we're what we love and to, to have this gallery and continue doing it yeah um, but overall looking back you know you start to only remember the good things mostly <laughs> <laughs> not the stressful nights and whatnot so it was all fun though it was because great. it was all a part of building yeah our life yeah um another thing is another note on making aliyah and the opening of business is because we started everything here so we don't know what life is like anywhere else we don't know what opening a business is like anywhere else so we anyways had to learn we everything. had to find an accountant we exactly. had to find a lawyer we had to get insurance all in hebrew so it does add an extra layer but yeah, I'd never signed up for insurance in my life before yeah. we moved here, so it was the first time. Might as well do it. Here. A lot of learning curve. <laughs> um, and so now that you're speaking from the gallery, and we heard about how, what it was like to open it, so many people are asking, "How can we visit?" So <laughs> hopefully, one day we'll be able to enter the land of Israel in a in a much easier fashion. Um, I mean, and so, how can people come visit? And if they can't visit, how can they view more? You know, online. And if people are even interested in bringing their artwork into their home, do you want to just briefly discuss that process so that um, it's clear yeah. a lot of people are asking? Yeah, definitely. So our Jerusalem gallery is located in the heart, in the center of Jerusalem. It's about a ten-minute walk from the Kotel, basically, right outside of the Mamilla Mall. So that's the location of it. And we post our hours on our website. We try to keep them as updated as possible. Um, our website is yafineart.com. We also have a location in South Florida that's open by appointments. So if you're located in Florida or you happen to be visiting there, especially now as it's hard to get into Israel. So if you happen to be in Florida, you can definitely reach out through our website um, and set up an appointment to visit there. Um, what else? Our email is contact at yafineart.com. Our Instagram and Facebook are at yafineart. And on there, we post about our day-to-day -day lives and show you life in more behind the scenes, life in Israel and our photo trips, um, the process of purchasing. So all of our photo, all of our limited edition photographs are available in a wide range of sizes. Um, we're able to customize the size to fit your space and where we work with you to figure out the perfect fit so if you're interested you can reach out through our website and i will work with you to figure out the perfect fit for your space um, we have delivery all around the world in us it's four to six weeks delivery generally um, 
and uh, that is how to order. Also, if you are interested in ordering, we want to offer you a 15% discount for being a part of the March of the Living family. So just mention to us that you were on this webinar or you're involved with March of the Living and we'll give that to you. Also, you can oh. show. Uh, <laughs> we just, uh, we're, we're now selling our new book with all of the, all of our current pieces from the collection called so, Land of Light. Um, it's currently being manufactured still, so it's going to be shipping in the next few months. But that's a really special way to bring the beauty and the light of Israel into your home by having every single piece of mine with the written reflection as well. Uh, it's definitely something very unique and inspiring to be able to flip through the pages and and embrace and delve into the this land. <laughs> So it's available for pre-order on our website, yafineart.com slash book. Thank you. It's very special. And I'm sure so many of us would love to have your beautiful work in our home in some form or another. Mm -hmm. I had a really very interesting question come in um, in the Q&A that I would love to ask, but I don't want to put pressure on you. Um, <laughs> so it could just be a comment, but I wonder whether you would ever consider coming back with us to Poland one year and photographing that experience. Um, not a question, just a comment. But so, uh, we can... <laughs> uh, I, I, would, I would be interested. I'm open to anything. I actually have a project that I, I worked on right after the march and then I put it on hold, but I've been meaning to, to finish it now. Uh, when, when I went on the trip, I, I, I purposefully didn't bring a camera with me uh, because I, get, I thought I might get so into the pictures and then lose the actual experience of being there. Uh, but having once I was on the trip and, and seeing what I saw I couldn't help myself because I wanted to capture it in my own way I was seeing different compositions and I I just had to capture them so I had my phone because everyone has a camera in their pocket these days uh, and the phone cameras nowadays are really clear I mean that was a few years ago but it was still it was still pretty high quality so I actually put together a book of the images I photographed on the trip uh, all in black and white and right after the trip, I, I basically went through and wrote some thoughts on it. Uh, it's something that I, I printed only a few books, but, but now having gone through the experience of pub self-publishing this book of all of my Israel photographs, so I'm now going to be working on that project because I think it's really important to, to share more and more uh, about what happened and, and what the Marsha Living trip was like for me and tell my story and my unique uh, kind of view on it but having said that maybe that will require me to go back and do more I think also we've talked about how now our experience in Poland would be so different from our vantage point so yeah, I think how much it, we've it grown would, as a like a couple with a yeah. baby and having lived in his own house have a years. much even bigger impact in some right. ways now I look forward to seeing those photographs immensely. So, <laughs> so please keep us posted. It. Please keep the entire March of a living Never, never before uh, publicized. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> um, and so we're, you know, our time is running out, unfortunately. And I kind of want to just leave it with one open question for both of you. Is what's the one message you hope people take away from your art and from your story? Uh, the one message I hope people take away is that the land of Israel is very unique and beautiful on the inside and out. Uh, and that that reflects the beauty of the entire world as a whole, that it's not about necessarily going to X place that's, that everyone thinks of as being beautiful, but it's about finding it within ourselves and seeing everything in that light. And also, I think, as you shared in the video and in your introduction to the book, is calling out to people to hear their own lechlecha, to hear Hashem, God, whatever you want to call the, the guiding force of existence, guiding you to where you need to be, and being able to experience that, that light, especially through visiting the land of Israel. Um, and feeling more connected, deeply connected to the land in whatever way that means for you.
Thank you so much to both of you, Yoshu and Jordan, for sharing your light with all of us. I'm sure I speak for everyone when I say that your inspiration of sharing light despite the darkness is something that we're all going to take away from this um, experience together. And we wish you lots of luck, Katzlacha, in the future with all of your endeavors. You. Please keep us posted so we can be proud of all of our alumni. And I know we're all going to dream about your beautiful photographs now at night. I especially <laughs> love the one behind you. <laughs> Um, and I know my daughter loves it too because she said it was rainbowy. So we'll hope we bring that back Perfect. into our home as well. Um, to hear more about further educational webinars being offered by the March of a Living, please visit our website motl.org or follow us on our various social media platforms. We look forward to greeting all of you at our next event in the future. In the meantime, stay safe. Shana Tova, a happy new year to all. Thank you. Thank you all for being here and thank you for the opportunity. Hopefully, we'll see you in Jerusalem soon. <laughs> Shalom.